A small city car with a bright design, good handling, and the presence of charged versions with turbo engines. An image and not the cheapest toy, which in Russia was doomed to become a niche product with a small but devoted fan base. There are those who bought a 500 coup and were dissatisfied. Let's listen to the arguments of the first and second. The premiere of the small Fiat took place in the summer of 2007. The Neo Retro model replaced the Fiat Seicento, translated as 600. It is believed that the decision of the Italians to turn to the style of the legendary post-war Fiat 500 Topolino, Mouse, was influenced by the success of the VW Beetle and Mini, and the Fiat model was made according to the same scheme, mass platform plus design with the taste of the legend. Technically, the car was a three-door hatchback with a suspension design quite typical for compact cars, fronted McPherson struts, rear torsion beam. The new Cinquecento was equipped with a very wide range of engines, including a 1.3-liter diesel engine of the multi-jet family with a capacity of 65 and 95 horsepower and gasoline engines of the fire family with a volume of 1.2 liters, 69 horsepower, and 1.4 L, 100 to 102 horsepower. In 2010, the Fiat 500 was introduced in Geneva with new twin-cylinder 0.9-liter twin-air engines, more precisely, first 964 and then 875 cubic centimeters, with a capacity of 60 to 105 horsepower, with. Naturally, the court tuning studio Abarth did not stand aside either, which, a year after the start of mass production, prepared a charged version with a 135 horsepower turbocharged version of the Fire 1.4 engine, and subsequently created 500s with a capacity of first 160 and then an 200L, with. Several variants of boxes were aggregated with motors. Paired with weaker gasoline engines, a 5-speed manual gearbox worked, and with more powerful ones, a six-speed one. In the U.S. market, a six-speed hydromechanics was offered as an automatic transmission, and in the European market, a five-speed seal-speed robotic box with one clutch. Since 2008, the car has been produced not only in the hatchback body, the 500C Cabriolet has replenished the line, and in 2013, the all-electric version of the Fiat 500E appeared. In 2015, the car has undergone restyling. The changes affected mainly the interior design, which has a new steering wheel, fresh trim materials, as well as the Uconnect multimedia system with a 5 or 7 inch display. In addition, a modified radiator grille, a new bumper and optics with a different pattern somewhat transformed the image of the front of the car, but in general, Fiat designers decided that the best seller's appearance should not be changed too radically. All engines after restyling comply with negative 6 euro standards. Official sales of the Fiat 500 in Russia started in 2008. The importer has chosen a quite reasonable policy, since mass demand cannot be counted on, then the price can be set so as to make good money on each item sold. As a result, Cinquecento is present in a very limited number on the secondary market. Cars from the first batches imported to Russia, that is, manufactured in 2008 to 2009, with a mileage of 130 to 150,000 kilometers can be bought for 290 to 350,000 rubles. For relatively fresh samples of 2014 to 2015 with a mileage of 20 to 80,000 kilometers, they are already asking for 1,350,000 to 1,200,000, that is, even more than for new cars that dealers offer at a price of 1,069,000 rubles. True, there are no real cars in the showrooms, and they are delivered to order. Separately, there are sports versions of Abarth with mileage. For them, depending on age, mileage, and technical condition, they can ask for 850,000 and 1,450,000 rubles. Well, let's move on to the arguments of supporters and opponents. Hate number five, size and price. In almost every second review of owners of small cars, regardless of the brand, you can find complaints that little ones are offended that they cut them off, they are not inferior when rebuilding. There are many such complaints in the reviews of the owners of the Fiat 500. Fate had to share the road with a typical little man who tries to compensate for his inferiority complex by acquiring, usually for the last, an ancient, 
once, very long time, luxury SUV, certainly black colors, certainly on paid numbers, as well as appropriate behavior on the road. Of course, the tender psyche of such subjects cannot endure when they are overtaken in small red cars, and they consider it their duty to squeeze out such impudent ones, more precisely, more often impudent ones, after all, from the impudent one can fly over the cabbage soup, beyond the dividing strip. Indeed, since the model does not fit the role of a family, the niches of the youth and female car remain. But for them, the Fiat 500 initially turned out to be too expensive, given that it was in Italy that the 500th immediately received the status of a cult model. In our country, there was no special reverence for the brand. As a result, when in 2008 500 cars were brought to Russia and put up for a price exceeding $20,000, few people dared to buy such an expensive baby, especially in a crisis. No positive reviews in the press could turn the tide. Cars stood in warehouses for a couple of years, and in 2010 they began to sell them with significant discounts. As a result, all the cars of the first batch sold out. In 2012 to 2013, dealers sold charged 160 horsepower versions of the Fiat 500 Abarth. It was already more interesting, but these cars were even more expensive. And today, official Fiat dealers offer a slightly updated model at a price of 1,069,000 rubles. This, of course, is significantly less than the prices of the direct ideological competitor, that is, many, but, on the other hand, the quite solid Kia Seed in the classic package costs the same. As a result, a rather paradoxical situation has developed in the secondary market, three-year-old owners value almost more than they cost new in those legendary times when the dollar was 37 rubles each and for a million you could buy more than a decent new car. For a well-preserved copy of the same version of Abarth with low mileage, they can ask for 1,200,000 and 1,400,000 and for a 100 horsepower 500, 750 to 800,000. It remains only to pathetically raise your hands to the sky and say the sacramental, what is this money for and who will buy this? Love number five, design and style. Yes, people simply cannot resist the charm of the 500th. Designers Roberto Gelito and Frank Stevenson made full use of the cult status of Dante Giacos' immortal creation, the old Fiat 500 on which the entire post-war European generation grew up. And in Italy, where the machine has become the same symbol of the country as pasta, pizza, Chianti, mozzarella, and the immortal commissioner Catani, love for the classic Cinquecento is simply immeasurable. In almost every town, there are clubs of owners who regularly hold car parades and fun rallies. And all this love was successfully inherited by the new 500th. Its design literally shines with positive, the appearance is magnificent, Everyone likes it, from esthetes to gobniks, which is unexpected, the car attracts the attention of others. Children, adults, everyone pays attention, looks, asks, the main advantage of the car is a bright, eye-catching design. So they write in their reviews of its not too numerous Russian owners. And they also note that this design will remain relevant even after 10 years, and that it is almost impossible to improve something in it, it is so finished. Fiat 500 is one of those models that are bought, not on the basis of some rational considerations, but because of falling in love at first sight. Therefore, a car often falls into the category of spontaneous purchases. I was driving home along Kasherka and suddenly turned into Moscow, so as to take a look at brand new cars and understand that I don't want to change Peugeot for anything. But how he sat down in the 500th, that's it. Getting me out of there was impossible. A week later, without even trying to sell the PYZH through the site, I handed it in for trade-in comma the car was bought in 2010, in general, by accident, I had been looking for a long time, but did not dare to change the full body for such miniature design. But at one point everything came together, summer, the sun, a lousy mood, and now I'm taking a new one, white, with the Italian flag from the salon. And the environment must also match the image of this, no doubt, exceptionally stylish car. Here's what 500 people living on the Black Sea coast write about their Fiat. He carries a harpoon for fish, fins, and a wetsuit, lives with a view of the sea, everyone would like it. Oh yes, he sees what he should see, 
the sea, the sun, and the holiday. Hate number four, three door. Another factor hindering the spread of the Fiat 500 in Russia is a three door body. Yes, three doors are significantly better than four in terms of torsional rigidity of the body and therefore in terms of handling and safety. But the same factor creates very real inconvenience in everyday use. Firstly, the convenience of access to the second row of seats. I wouldn't dare to sit in the back seats. The services of a massage therapist are now not cheap, and I'm not an acrobat, and I'm not a boy anymore, writes one of the owners. Secondly, there is not so much space on the second row, and taking a wife, children, and mother-in-law to the dacha turns into a difficult task. You can't drive your mother-in-law to the gallery due to age, and the wife's bad mood after a long trip is almost guaranteed. But landing on the second row is not so much inconvenient as the huge front doors themselves, too heavy for children, swinging open a good meter and touching neighboring cars in the parking lot or garage walls. It's parallel to the road edge. The Fiat 500 parks with extraordinary ease. When looking for a parking space nose to the curb, you need to look for a place with a large margin on the sides. Love number four, Salon. But the Salon of the 500th is liked by admirers of the model no less than its appearance. I like the design, architecture, ergonomics, equipment, and, most importantly, capacity. Yes, the plastic of the inner panels is solid. There is no closing glove box, only a shelf. Along the entire front panel there is a body-colored plastic trim that evokes the first post-war cars, the instrument cluster resembles a motorcycle. But sitting behind the wheel, according to the authors of the reviews, is quite convenient, the manual gearbox handle literally falls into the hand itself, and the clutch pedal is pressed with female effort. Very stylish and ergonomic interior design, leather upholstery of seats and steering wheel. Panoramic roof glazing, Italian-style interior is beautiful, build quality is on top, materials are quite, everything is in place, and even a number of features like power window buttons located at the gearshift handle are taken for granted. With a height of 180 and a weight of 100, there are no problems with fit and adjustment, the doors are trimmed with cheap plastic, but all the interior flaws fade as soon as you look at the front panel. The speedometer and part-time tachometer and computer is a masterpiece. The radio tape recorder, made under retro, with large pixels, looks very welcome. Gear knob upholstered in leather. The steering wheel is small and comfortable, the authors of the reviews admire. The owners really like this option as a panoramic roof with a curtain, of course, we are talking about those who have one I have both cars with a panoramic roof, and this is a bomb and nice and done conveniently but most of all the owners are pleased with the amazing capacity for such a small car the rear seats are not made for show they can easily accommodate three people and the trunk due to the convex shape of the door really holds a lot if you fold the rear seats you get a square of 130 by 130 everything is correct we drove it together with my wife at sea and more than once it was quite comfortable when the separate rear seats are folded down, two bicycles, two snowboards and much more fit in, it turns out a kind of coupe with a huge trunk, the interior is roomy for such a car size, two full-fledged child car seats were quietly placed in the back, for wheels fit into the trunk with a seasonal change of rubber, there is, oddly enough, enough space. We went boarding, two people, two boards and this is without folded seats. The trunk is quite normal, four of us go to the country, everything will fit, and if the three of us, then it's a fairy tale. Just ask you not to compare with large cars, the stump is clear that there is more space in the Touareg, the car has quite a roomy trunk. Compare with many, here it is larger. And I will surprise you, under the floor there is a full-size spare wheel, and in the mini there is no spare wheel at all. There are, of course, some minor complaints. Someone complains about the not-so-comfortable profile of the seatbacks. Someone about the lack of rear sofa headrests. Someone finds a number of ergonomic solutions dubious. For a long time I thought that my 500-something is wrong with the power windows. The left one has the function of completely closing and opening with one touch, and the right one must always be held. Turns out it's not a bug, it's a feature. But even those who find many shortcomings in the Fiat 500 admit, 
why did you fall in love? For the best interior, for cool music, for USB, Bluetooth, and an electrochromic mirror on a tiny car in 2008, for style and being different from everything else. Hate number three, stiff suspension and flotation. But the suspension of the car is quite expected criticism, they say, too hard. I'm glad I didn't take a test drive. The first time I rode when I left the salon. We'll explain. Not a single more or less adequate person, having ridden the 500 for the first time, will never buy it, especially for such money. The rubber is low profile in the base, so it's impossible to shake. The suspension is also soft. And I compare this with the Peugeot 207. It is better not to ride on tram tracks on the 16th rubber at all. After them, you will stutter for about 5 minutes, the moment of truth comes on a bad road. Naturally, miracles do not happen, and the thoroughbred suspensions are only enough for a very narrow range of working travel. On the cobblestones, the 500th is a cart from Oshan, the owners complain. In their opinion, on a bad road, the Fiat 500 is desperately goaty, and having caught a hole in a turn, jumps unpleasantly to the side. They do not evaluate the cross-country ability in the best way, believing that this is a typical European car for operation on good asphalt and roads cleared of snow. Of course, the assessment of smoothness is a subjective thing, and someone finds that the stiffness of the car's suspension does not go beyond acceptable limits. The average car enthusiast may have complaints about the smoothness of the ride. The base is short and the wheels are small, so when it hits the transverse crack or pit blow, of course, is felt. Nevertheless, passengers do not get injured, the suspension does not break and the tires do not break through, the suspension is moderately stiff, but not furious. You can live in Moscow with tram tracks and paving stones. But most importantly, the owners understand what this rigidity is the price for. Love number three, handling, dynamics, and fuel consumption. Because the driving characteristics of the Fiat 500 in the reviews are assessed by the owners in the most positive way. Let's start with the dynamics. Naturally, for many engines, the assessment of this parameter turns out to be very different. In our market, there were mainly three variants of inline fours of the Fire Series, two atmospheric engines with a volume of 1.2 and 1.4 liters and a power of 69 and 100 horsepower, respectively, and a 1.4 liter fire turbojet turbo engine with 160 horsepower. According to the owners, 69 horses is quite enough to move around the city, especially if you turn on the sport mode. In this mode, the car is very playful, for which it received the nickname Crazy Stool. Dynamics at city speeds were fine, but on highways the engine was tight. But nevertheless, I accelerated to 143 km/h according to GPS, and there was still a small margin. But, according to the owners, it is difficult to distinguish real dynamics from subjective sensations. Like all Italians, the car creates a feeling of speed in the absence of it. You can drive down the street at speeds of 40 to 80, but the mediocre noise, the engine at high speeds, and the unexpected switching of the robot create the feeling that you are driving a VW Polo next to Sebastian Obier along the French rally tracks. But the 100 horsepower version already really knows how to drive quite quickly and shows itself well on long hauls, including due to well thought out aerodynamics. We went to Sochi more than once, kept the speed at 130 to 160. It rides like it's on rails, and don't listen to those who say it's blowing away. I had the experience of a long journey, Moscow, Riga, Prague, Munich, Moscow. It behaves perfectly in any mode, digests 150 kilometers slash h with dignity. The fact that the car perfectly keeps the trajectory in the entire range of speeds available to it is noted by almost all the authors of the reviews. Well, the 160 horsepower Abarth is a small rocket on wheels. How does it ride? Approximately on a par with the new Passat, it was with this that they were hacked to death on the way from Rome. The German, RUD region, I don't know what kind of city, did not understand that 500 can be fast, and tried to break away. Yes, where is it? He did not dare to accelerate more than 180, according to GPS. But still, the main advantage of the Fiat 500 is its excellent groovy handling, 
and in bundles of fast turns it can give simply indescribable emotions. On the serpentines of the Caucasus, the Fiat 500 suddenly turned out to be completely different than it was before. Suddenly, he had no equal, he found himself in his native element. Who knows what I mean, he will understand, Provat on serpentines on a 500 coup. You can laugh, but I, perhaps, have never experienced such a driver's buzz before or after. 100 forces for acceleration, especially in the mountains, of course, about nothing, but the trolley allows you to bring almost all the gained speed into a turn and, raising the rear wheel, fall into a hairpin. This makes it possible to almost catch up in speed with local minibus drivers, which, of course, is impossible, and easily deal with visitors in sedans and luxury crossovers, and horror slowing down on serpentine loops up to 15 to 20 kilometers slash h. If the turn turned out to be steeper than it seemed at the entrance, the slip is very accurate and quickly extinguished by the reverse movement of the steering wheel. Before that, I thought that such a thing was only possible on a map. This is written about the version with a 100 horsepower engine, but even more all this driver's enthusiasm applies to the Fiat 500 Abarth. How does the Abarth differ from the standard, except for the nameplates? Of course, the engine, suspension, and power steering. In fact, having receded from the Tuareg to the Schmackodayavaka, I did not feel any loss in the quality of movement, as the Germans call it. That is, I feel that a thoroughbred car is under me, but at the same time I do not see a long hood, and in the rearview mirror right in front of me is the rear window. Of course, there are faster cars, and on the unlimited section of the Autobahn, Abarth will merge a lot of people, but on a narrow mountain road it is simply gorgeous. It is the handling that makes the owners put up with shaking, personally, for me, the assembled suspension, which provides proper handling, is more important than softness. After I got into a tree on a winding forest path in my American, and my father turned his Camry into a ditch, unwinding along a rut on the highway, no one will convince me that comfort in a cart is more important than taxiing. Hate number two, quality of service and lack of spare parts. Alas, the life of the owner of the Fiat 500 does not consist of driving pleasures alone. In fact, the car is quite reliable, but, nevertheless, it still breaks down from time to time. For a run of 125,000, I changed the timing belt once, front levers and stabilizer struts, rear pads, they are drum type with all springs and mechanisms, front discs only once and several times, front pads, front hub bearing, came up from nine, spark plugs. For 10 years of operation, this is very small and cheap. Fire engines are also rated as quite reliable. There is no need to be afraid of the engine and Italian quality. As for this particular car, under the hood it has a proven engine completely on German equipment. In terms of assembly and design, it is completely different from what they put in Dablo, Albia, or Punto. Problems begin when the owner tries to seek help from an official service center. Complaints about the quality and too high cost of repairs and maintenance at branded service stations can be found in almost every review. I didn't know where to go yet, and turned to Forrest, the only dealer in St. Petersburg. In general, I left the money there right away. Despite the fact that they, in fact, did nothing. This prompted me to look for other services, just do not use the official, because there are not only exorbitant prices, but also dubious diagnostic results. That is, pay exorbitant prices, and even not for that. And the 500th is also characterized by cases of indication of problems that actually do not exist. To our horror, the check for the box caught fire. It turned out that the plastic of the tidy was hardened from frost, and the eco mode button sunk after pressing. Then the car warmed up, the button returned to its original position, the check went out. But, perhaps, in the same situation, someone managed to get to the service with a burning check, and good servicemen managed to sentence him a box. The Fiat 500 is quite simple in terms of design, so it is quite amenable to self-repair and service in garages. And here the problem of the availability of the necessary spare parts in Russia arises to its full potential. One of the owners, who left a very positive overall review, honestly writes, reason for sale can't find the parts you need anywhere. 
I was not stopped even by a wheel cover that took 35 days from Italy, but 35 days is better than a part missing from existential, zap, auto.ru, a veto, and eBay. As soon as I came up against the fact that I could not find the right part for any money, the car was sold. Love number two, body strength and corrosion resistance. But what does not cause any concern for the owners of the Nuovo Cinquecento is the condition of the body. This applies even to very old and battered specimens. In the reviews you will not find complaints about mushrooms climbing from everywhere, rotten door edges and through corrosion in the floor. The body does not rot at all. I noticed a chip to the metal all salty winter and not a drop of mushrooms formed there. It can be seen that the 500s have high quality galvanizing and they did it not for subsequent scrap and restyling, the owners share their experience. Taught by the bitter experience of buying other cars in the secondary market, they pay special attention to this issue, and then share their unexpected joy with surprise. I examined the entire body and suspension. There are no hints of rust. But the body of the Fiat 500 is distinguished not only by excellent resistance to corrosion, but also by mechanical strength. Very strong car. Rear and sides you don't have to worry about light bumps when parking. No deformation and there is no trace left. Gazelle arrived at 40 kilometers slash H from behind, muzzle in the trash, radiators pierced, windshield in half, the driver is practically on my roof. Fiat has a rear bumper, a lamp, and a bent exhaust pipe. And that's it. In more than half of the reviews, the authors attribute this amazing strength to one of the most important advantages of the model. Hate number one, robotic box. The 500 running on Russian roads can be equipped with three types of gearboxes, a 5-speed manual gearbox, which was aggregated with 1.2-liter engines, a 6-speed manual gearbox, it was equipped with cars with a 1.4-liter engine, and a 5-speed robot seal speed. Mechanical boxes do not cause any complaints, the gear shift is clear, the lever strokes are short, the selection of gear ratios is very correct. The bulk of the complaints about the operation of the transmission is connected precisely with the seal speed robotic gearbox. First, his work requires getting used to. If you want to accelerate, spin the engine, and to do it on time, you need to press the gas pedal with some advance. Secondly, dynamics adequate for city streets can only be obtained in the sport mode. This mode has an absolutely miraculous effect on the behavior of the car. The steering wheel, gas pedal, and engine elasticity become noticeably different. The behavior of the robot changes incredibly, plus the image on the display changes as a bonus speedometer. The robot is not in the sport in the city dulls when accelerating. Sometimes you have to think for him. In sport mode, this problem does not exist. But experienced owners warn that the constant use of this mode leads to a decrease in an already small resource and an increase in the likelihood of a breakdown. And the first symptom of the beginning problems is the jerky nature of the switches. The robot is complete junk, either you stand still or jump. The jerky robot worked as badly as possible. For the same, with one clutch, there were no questions for Peugeot, there are a lot of such complaints. But if he only twitched, it would be half the trouble. The main trouble is that seal speed cannot boast of high reliability, and serious losses of both money and time are associated with their repair, especially if you contact the official service station. Here is how one of the owners describes the situation. One day, because of him, the car just stood in the middle of the road. Having traveled to the officials on a tow truck, I received a verdict. The replacement of the robot assembly, the price is 213,000 rubles. It's good that... After looking through my friends for a good service, I eventually found it. The price of the issue with tow trucks and spare parts is 20,000 rubles. The thing is that seal speed is poorly adapted to our weather and temperature conditions. This box has two lubrication circuits. Directly into the robot, that is, into the gear changing actuator, a specific oil is poured, resembling brake fluid in its properties. The downside of this oil is its hygroscopicity. Experienced and technically competent owners warn, in our climate, after each off-season, that is, after spring and autumn, it is necessary to replace this fluid, then there will be no problems with the box. The liquid is needed only the original, brand Tutela, I have not seen analog substitutes. 
If it is below minus 25C outside the window, it is better to refuse to operate the car, the accumulator will close. With a torn accumulator membrane, when the car twitches and knocks out speeds, it is better not to operate the car, but to repair it right away, since this malfunction will quickly kill the pump, and it now costs about 40,000 rubles. An unexpected recommendation concerns the urban use of the Fiat 500 Abarth, and it applies primarily to trips in those cities where the streets go up and down, in the city, it is better to turn off the sport mode. Otherwise, it is difficult to get underway uphill, the motor stops pulling on the bottoms and requires tops. And in general, the motorcycle experience is very useful to me riding with a constantly slipping clutch when you need to slowly pull in a traffic jam up a steep hill. Love number one, city convenience. And, of course, in almost every review you will find a story about how convenient Nuf Cinquecento is in a big city. And why, in fact, do people buy small nimble cars? Precisely in order to feel in the urban jungle, like a fish in water. Perfect city car. We bought it for my wife to travel around the city, she is delighted, due to the small dimensions it is easier to find a parking place, my husband worked in the city center, there are no problems with parking the car is small, nimble, the length of the car is almost equal to the wheelbase. The body ends right behind the rear window, even parking sensors are not needed, it turns around on a penny, such statements can be quoted endlessly. Very many of the owners came up with the idea of buying a Fiat 500 after a tourist trip to Europe, where they rented this car. Actually, in their homeland, in Italy, the 500 is sometimes simply irreplaceable, how good it is in the narrow streets of the mountainous Sicilian towns. Before that, I drove big cars in Italy, and it was sheer torture. I assure you that the owner of a Land Cruiser 200 will not be able to visit 80% of the Sicilian streets and the owner of Toyota Avensis at least 20%. 500-inch crawls everywhere, even where it seems to you that you drove a car into a wardrobe. 